Hello, beautiful soul. I'm Vicki Howie of ChakraBoosters.com, the creator of Chakra Boosters Healing Tattoos. And if you're new to my channel, I'm so glad you found me. I hope if you like this video, you'll give it a like and you'll subscribe so we can connect some more. Today, I am going to look at five mistakes that I made when I started my chakra healing journey. In earnest, that journey started about, I was exposed to chakras 25 years ago or so, but my journey with the chakras really began about 15 years ago, and I have been doing chakra boosters for about 12. I can't even believe it. <laughs> Whoa, time flies when you're having fun, doesn't it? So let's look at the five mistakes that I made, hoping that these can help you to not need to make those mistakes. If you make them, fine. There are no mistakes really, right? We're just going along our path, but they might save you some time and a little bit of heartache. So let's go over them. The first one is not doing an assessment. Now this one is so basic. I mean, we would never go get a surgery. We would never go to a doctor and have them give us no diagnosis and then give us the treatment. But with chakras, people are often doing treatments, getting energy healings, buying particular stones that would boost certain chakras, doing certain meditations, you know, just engaging in all kinds of healings without actually doing an assessment. Now, why are we doing this? I have my theory. I think it's because for so long, we were in a very heavy root chakra uh, field. Our planet is very root chakra, obviously, but now we're in a place in the galaxy, we've been moving, ascending our energy. The planet herself has been ascending energy for quite a while now. For me, it feels about 25 years of just a lot of lightening up. We're seeing a whole new generation of children being born with upper chakra energy. They're coming in as psychic prodigies, indigo children, rainbow children, on a wider level, highly sensitive children, autistic children. All of these that I've mentioned are more upper chakra oriented. They aren't the traditional children that are born root and then need to grow up like a tree from the root. It's like they're parachuting down. I'm upper chakra dominant, so I really fit this paradigm. I've done a lot of work on my root, so I hope, I hope that shows <laughs> that I'm a little more grounded and just the fact that I do these videos weekly, that's a very root chakra thing. That's a very grounded thing. I'm in a lot more routine in certain areas of my life, in many areas of my life. And my psychic abilities are more grounded. I can share them in the real world by being more grounded. But my journey has been one from going from upper to lower, meaning I've worked more on my lower chakras. And the majority of the world, even still today, needs to go, needs to work more on the upper chakras. There's more people still hanging out in the root. But if you're watching my videos and you've been drawn to my channel, you might not fit the majority. You might fit the tribe of people that are more upper chakra dominant, which means you're more psychic, spiritually oriented. The grounding real world stuff is tougher for you. But regardless, I have three types that I outline. And if you go to chakraabundance.com, chakraabundance.com, I have a free audio where I talk about the abundance types. And these are the same types in anything in life, but because abundance is in every area of life, and that is upper chakra types, lower chakra types, and uh, splits, the, the type the bounce back and forth and are missing in the middle. So you might want to go watch ChakraAbundance.com or go sign up at ChakraAbundance.com and listen. I'm sorry, I said watch. Listen to the audio that I give free there and figure out where you're at because that really helps. But simpler yet or as simple is to also go take a chakra test. You can look at my videos on chakra weaknesses and chakra strengths. I have uh, two different uh, playlists, but you can also just take a physical test. Now realize, physical I mean by real world, written test. And that is at eclecticenergies.com. It's a really great test. 
I cannot embrace any other test online. And I have not had the resources to create one of my own, not that I think I could do one better anyway. Eclecticenergies.com is a really good valid test. All tests that test the chakras will be limited by the authenticity of your throat chakra. Are you really gonna be honest and speak your true answer each time? Are you going to uh, just be really spontaneously truthful, not heady, you know, not making up a story, not trying to get a good score, because that's not assessment if you're trying to get a good score. Lots and lots of videos I have on this channel will also sort of show you which chakras are weaker or stronger, like what type of chakra personality you are, what your life path number is, which affects your chakras. I have lots and lots of videos on that stuff. But the point is, do an assessment. <laughs> I didn't do an assessment in the beginning because I came up in the yogic tradition. I was teaching yoga and it was just, hey, you want to try to get your energy up. So in truth, in the beginning, when I started my yoga practice, I was doing meditation and upper chakra types of visualization, third eye opening, crown opening, when in fact, those chakras for me were already overactive and all of my lower chakras, especially my root, especially my root, were underactive. And I really needed to do the opposite of what I was doing. I needed to ground, not go up. I really did. I needed to do uh, repetitive, world, real world types of exercises rather than um, constantly doing lucid dreaming or third eye stuff. I it just I was exacerbating my my imbalance that was already there. So I hope that makes sense. And you will do an assessment. And you the chakras change. We have patterns. So they don't tend to change like ridiculously. The, we have like a profile. Our childhood affects us a lot. Our first seven foundational years set down our root chakra foundation. And because of that, our chakras can change a little from test to test, no question. And when you're doing healing and you're working the videos of my channel, you might see lots of changes. When I did Chakra Abundance, my, pro, my digital program, uh, that's now my store, but when I was doing it live, the people that were doing it with me were taking the tests often, and their tests were changing and changing and changing and always progressing and opening more chakras, which is really fun to see, and it's also why I really trust the test that we were taking, the one at eclecticenergies.com. Additionally, it's not a marketing test. They don't sell you anything. It's just a nice test, and it's in several languages. So my, I really honor <laughs> my hats off to the guy that created that. So that's number one, assessment. You wouldn't go to a doc doctor and get a surgery or a treatment without first assessing. So why would you do energy healing without first assessing where you're at? Always when you're trying to get somewhere or transform into a larger space, you have to know where you are to go anywhere different, right? So take a snapshot second blunder of mine, and this one is so important, you guys, so important, was that I often judged myself because I thought I was trying to fix my problems. I thought I was trying to fix myself. So there was a lot of judgment. I would take a test and go, oh, my root chakra is so low. And I just, I would use the information to be harder on myself. And this saddens my heart because all healing comes from acceptance and love. Self-love when it's self-healing. Love of others for planetary healing. Can you feel that? So having an opinion or having a, an awareness of something, we're meant to use our analytical minds, but they're using us when we're actually emotionally judging ourselves. So the information I give you on this channel, I really, really do not want you to use it to judge yourself. 
whatever blocks we have in our chakras, we got due to protective mechanisms within ourselves because of the traumas that we've experienced in life. They're simply the scars of our traumas. Now, if someone got scars on themselves, you would never uh, judge them for those scars. You would have compassion for them for those scars. Really closed energy, closed chakras, not very active chakras are simply a reaction, a closing down, a contraction that's happened from childhood wounds. So more than ever, if we see that a chakra is closed, it's not a judgment. It's not a less than. It's a, oh, let me help you. Like we want to help ourselves and we want to help the chakra to open. It's a loving approach. So I want you to promise me you're going to catch yourself if you watch one of my videos on overactive chakras or weak chakras and you are using it for self-judgment or taking a list and ticking it off for someone else that you know because those are really reflections of the same thing. When we're judging other, we're judging self. When we're judging self, we're judging other. So let us try not to judge or fix because doing chakra work is not about fixing. It's about undoing the blocks. That's all that it's about. It's about undoing, un, like we've literally closed doors in the mansion of our being. We were this wide open being as a baby and we had access to all this energy in our body. And we closed this room and this room and this room because we were told they weren't acceptable. It's not okay to be angry. It's not okay to be greedy. It's not, oh, shadow is one of my favorite places to do work because shadow is really what makes us shut down. We hide parts of ourselves. And as we hide those parts of ourselves, we forget we even have them. We forget. It's like when you have that old, um, what do you call the, uh, uh, like you have a lock, right? a combination lock that you can open, but it's so old, you've even forgotten the, the code. You can't even remember how, what's the combination to this lock. That's how it is. So, we're going to do assessment, number one. Number two, no judgment. Not only no judgment, but more love. In place of judgment, love. Oh, that chakra is shut down. Let me love that little child. Let me love that part of me that under that love, love like a warm light, on a chicky in an ink a chicks and chicken egg in a incubator makes the chicky come out right not the cold not the judgment the warmth so i want you to promise me you're going to approach any information i give you on this channel with warmth because here's the thing ideas and this but not that those are actually good and there's a lot of information on the chakras, especially masculine, feminine information that I give you on this channel that really guides me all the time and helps me to understand my world better. But when you're in the solar plexus chakra, the mental chakra that allows you to process the information, there can be a tendency to move out of the neighboring heart chakra, the feminine. What we want to do is run the energy of both at the same time. Yes, I have the analytical mind, I have the information, and my heart is wide open. And I'm using the information to love myself and others more, not less. More love, not less. Agreed? Let's move on to number three. Number three is, and I'm going to talk about this one because right after the last one, because I talked a lot about shadow and child. And one of the things that was that I did as a mistake was I ignored pretty much my inner child. I didn't totally ignore shadow because I'd done some shadow work earlier. You might be avoiding shadow, in which case you definitely want to watch my series on shadow where you're going to be called to really love. It's easy for us to love ourselves when all the good stuff's out in the open, right? The hard, the challenge, the hard work is 
loving ourselves unconditionally. That means loving all of ourselves, loving the darkest, hardest parts to love. So that's what we want to focus on with shadow work. We're going to do love the hardest parts. And once you've done that, it's easy. Love, self-love, love of others is really, really easy. So I have a series where I look at the five, I think, are with, that are the toughest, the five toughest shadow qualities or most common shadow qualities for each chakra so that's 35 shadow qualities in the entire series and i give you the gift of every single one so you can fall in love with it and and not make yourself wrong your beautiful self needs permission to be in all of yourself and all of your power especially in those darker qualities and in the frequency of taking those out of the dark you can really utilize the gifts of them and you won't be compelled to let the subconscious run things which means if you press down a shadow quality oh i won't be greedy it will come out in its own ways i won't be angry it'll pop up in its own ways and it will be like a volcano because you've been pressing it down does that make sense so if it doesn't make too much sense, watch my shadow series, particularly the one with the five qualities. And if you like tapping, I have a series of shadow work where I go tap through one main quality for each chakra as well. So inner child work, inner child work is a, a beautiful and important part of anything where we're doing any kind of transformation where we're bringing back more of ourselves because our child, our inner child is the one that was so open that inner child within us is the one who took those traumatic hits and if we try to grow as an adult intellectually we try to take in information and even do exercises but we don't consult the one that had the original openness and went through the traumas on our behalf then it's going to remain disembodied the healing is going to remain disembodied there's going to be this child that is still not trusting us so in inner child work we get in touch with the innocent one that little one within us whatever age that went through the trauma and we reparent we reparent from a place of loving acceptance that allows the child to stretch into a wider field and not feel shamed or wrong. And I do have uh, a couple videos that I did on inner child healing and a meditation. I'm going to put all of these links down in the description area for you here. So do your inner child work and it can be. I'm also, in case you don't want to like go into all these other videos, I'm just going to quickly tell you it can be as simple as feel into your heart right now and ask yourself what part, what age needs me the most within me? And a number will immediately come up and trust that number. Typically, it'll be in the foundational years, one to seven, but sometimes it's in the, we go into the sacral years after the root chakra years, and if it's relationally oriented and you had more change um, from eight years on, it might be um, in those slightly later years. But we're talking about child years, so we're talking here definitely 12, 11, and below. And if you can get to the foundational years within the first seven, if there is a child there within you that needs your love, go there because that's very, very foundational. And you might not know this. I go over this in my Chakra Life Cycles book, Roadmap to Life, Your Roadmap to Life Mastery, Discover the Seven-Year Cycles that Shape Your Life. It's in my store. It's only in my store because my other book was published by a publisher and I wanted to self-publish. I just wanted to have to own to um, yeah own because I don't have ownership of key to the chakras the publisher does so I wanted to own my own book so it's in in the store and in it I explain in fact the key to the chakras explains this really well too it does it has a chapter on chakra needs as a child where we realize that we're developing at one years old you're developing root and root at two years old it's still root it's root until your seventh 
year, but at two years old, now it's intimacy. It's the sacral chakra and root. Three years old, it's your independence. You know, like terrible twos, I'm gonna do it myself, you know, and you're getting, you're totally uh, getting potty trained by the time you're three and you're, you're, you're a big girl or big boy kind of thing. So uh, that's your solar plexus at three years old, your heart at four years old, your throat chakra at five years old, your third eye at six years old, and your crown at seven. When a lot of right after seven, right when they turn eight, a lot of kids will do like communion or near the end of their seventh year. They'll do some kind of commitment to God. Okay. So all of these really fit. Go back and check. You'll be amazed. It's a beautiful thing to see the order of our development, the energy order of our development. Since we focus so much on the physical in our world, it's really cool to see that. So I want you to promise me you're going to love up that inner child and bring your inner child along. And it could be simple as getting in touch with the age, that number you came up with, get a picture. That's what I want you to do with that. Get a picture of you at that age. If you can, ask mom or dad or dig through your stuff find a picture of you at that age you can if you want maybe color xerox it so you still have the original and on that color xerox you could put hearts you can commune with that child right on the picture like hearts around it and and then frame it and put it next to your bed let your inner child be the one that you say good morning to and the one that you say good night to Good morning, inner child. <laughs> I love you. What do you need? You know, you're really looking to fulfill the needs that weren't fulfilled. You can do that now. You are an adult, and there's a part of you now that can actually serve that child. So that child is not being that needy child, the one that acts out in the store or acts out in public, but rather that child trusts you, loves you, and is becoming more and more him or herself, more complete, more whole, more effusive, more expressive, more boundary, more everything, okay? Number four, this one has been a problem for me for quite a while and still can be. So, but I'm doing a lot with it and that is trying to go it alone. We didn't get into this alone. We were born into a tribe and we're not gonna leave it alone. <laughs> you know, we didn't get into the world alone. We didn't get into our issues alone. Everything is social. We are social creatures. And when you try to do, there's kind of this image, again, I'm going back to the patriarchal uh, view where we don't need assessment, right? Because all we want to do is go up and be more communing with God and we're already rooted in our root chakra and we're already, we have that still masculine energy so we just want to go up. But the truth is that um, that is not the case anymore. Nor is it the case, we're in a very divine feminine era now. So it's about relational energy. Our deepest learnings are going to come from relationship. And I've done enough circle work now to know that we really are one. It's not some conceptual idea that we're just one, but when we sit down in a group together, and again, you and one other person can be a group or a circle. You're a group of two. Anytime there's more than one who gathers in my name is, is the saying, right? It brings in uh, spiritual energy. It brings in magic. So now I have done close to five years. I know I've done at least four years of circle work pretty consistently, very consistently. And I've been studying it. I'm going to bring it to you guys. I'm really going to bring it to my tribe, but I want it. It's such a delicate and beautiful and powerful thing. I wanted to make sure I really feel like I can do a form of surrendered leadership with bringing it to you before I bring it to you. So it's coming, it's coming, and I hope in 2020, circle work. Uh, circle work is, again, you and any other time you're being witnessed. Anyone else is helping you move through your transformation. And it doesn't always have to be a mentor. It can be a peer as well, especially in the circle setting, right? But what it means is that we're willing, we're not trying to go this alone the masculine way, because again, this 
independent idea that we need to go up, this idea that we need to do it in a cave and meditate alone. And it's true. That masculine aspect of us still exists and still needs to be honored. But it's only one part of the picture. And the new energy that's flooding the planet is an energy of connection, divine feminine. It's relational energy. So don't do this work alone. At the very least, do it in a diet. If you can find a group, a tribe, find that group, find that tribe. It doesn't have to be your actual relatives or tribe. Find one you can relate to. Get more involved in my tribe. I can't wait. I'm going to be putting out surveys and really talking to you guys and finding out more of what you want so we can do more together. It's time for us to start doing some live stuff together and some uh, in-person stuff together. Okay, so don't go it alone. That's number four. I went it alone for a long time and I basically raised myself. Some of you know my story. My dad died when I was one. My mom became an alcoholic. I remember <laughs> raising myself at like three, I, two and a half. I remember helping my mom do things and being almost the adult when I was a toddler. It's crazy. So that independence has led me to feel shame that, that, um, how do I explain it? Like just shame around groups or, or that I'm not good enough to be held, to fall back and be held. It's, it's led me to feel like no one will be there if I let go. Now these are shifting because I've been doing now for three or four years work, intense work in circle. Right now I'm doing almost daily online circle. As a participant, I'm not leading or anything, as a participant, so that I can continue to learn and grow so I have more to share with you. Yeah, it all goes together. <laughs> it's good for me, good for you, good for you, it's good for me. That's really how it works, um, especially in the feminine paradigm. Let's look at number five. Finally, number five is, and this is a pretty big buzzword right now, and I did it with great a plum <laughs> I don't know what the what is the word maybe not a plum I did it with great skill great great skill and that is spiritually bypassing this basically is a big term for saying that and it's easy to do it with chakras because chakras are energetic most people don't see them we don't see them we can't really feel them I feel them in my body another person's energy but uh, it's harder for me to feel my own oddly uh, it's like mine are my neutral slate and I can feel other people's energy. <laughs> so uh, chakras are really one of those areas, yoga and chakras, where there's a lot of spiritual bypassing, a lot of namaste and I wish you the best and I'm not going to acknowledge that my body feels hurt, my body feels pain, my body feels anger, <laughs> that my my personhood, my person, not the spiritual self that knows better, feels all these things that aren't being acknowledged, is experiencing these things that aren't being acknowledged. And once again, one of the themes you might see coming up in this is that we don't get healed with integrity. There isn't a full integrity in our healing when we are bypassing the physical self right when we're bypassing some part of the self when we're bypassing the child within the shadow the body these are all big ones child shadow body they all inform our unconscious and we can't be conscious if our unconscious is constantly sabotaging us and believe you me our unconscious will sabotage whatever's going on in an attempt to get attention because the real healing is in integrating inner child, shadow, and body. Bringing those, making them, because we're meant to walk around as enlightened beings now. We're meant to bring heaven on earth. We're meant to have more peace on earth. We're meant to have more ability. When I say peace, I don't mean like this. I mean ability to deal with each other's differences. To actually be able to be, to not homogenize, for all of us to be able to be who we really are and be accepting of each other. And that begins with full 
self-acceptance. I was a huge spiritual bypasser because I was a yoga teacher and all of this for me came from um, truly trauma in my childhood and being, as I described earlier, I was one of those indigo children, very psychic and very Vada in Ayurveda. Vada means skinny and wiry and tall, so not so naturally grounded. I kind of parachuted into this world energetically and never landed because there was no safe place to land in my home. So if you had a lot of trauma super early on, there's a chance that you never completely embodied. This is why I've done a lot of circle work because others hold you accountable. We can so easily go into denial. I've gone into so much denial that wasn't meant at all to be denial. I did it for spiritual reasons. I denied my own anger, my own resentment. I denied my own fears. I denied my own shame. You name it, I denied it all in favor of, and, and this part of me was real too, in favor of, oh, I, I forgive and move on. The problem was this part of me, the upper chakra part of me was being true in that, but I couldn't bring the body with me because the body didn't agree. The body's down there going, oh yeah, we forgive? That doesn't feel good to me because the body hadn't had its say. And many parts of my body still hasn't, haven't had their say. So I'm still doing that work and you guys know I'm really pro root chakra on this channel because I find that I have a lot of upper chakra people here who are wanting to reclaim this physical experience. So if you do chakra work that's purely energetic and you spiritually bypass, if you're constantly going to the oh, it's okay, oh, it's all right. A part of you really believes that and it's true for a part of you, but you are ignoring the other parts. And if you if you just want to do some work to, to move into that body, do circle work, do shadow work, and do inner child work. Again, same things. They will take you into your body and get you out of this spiritual, heady approach. Because the problem is when we get too much in that heady approach, you've probably met some people that were there. When you're around people that are very uh, spiritually bypassy, <laughs> I don't know if I can make that an adjective, but I just did, it feels unsafe to your body because they are saying one thing, but their body is often communicating something else. So I forgive you is the line, for instance, but you can feel the way they're acting around you that there is no forgiveness. So it's, it becomes this, this mixed message that makes you, alerts your body. Usually if you're in circle with this, if you're in a relationship with someone and they're giving you those mixed signals. If you and your own body are doing it though, and you're used to it, I know for me, I was so used to it and I was so not in my body that uh, I wasn't aware of it. I wasn't aware of it. It was just, I forgive you. And I wasn't aware of the, the what my body was really feeling and what my body really needed. So I'm grateful for every moment that I get to learn more about the body part. Yes, that healing deep down because spirituality isn't just up here in the fifth, sixth, and seventh upper spiritual chakras. It's in every cell of your body. It's what you're made of. You're made of God stuff. Remember that all of it is really about us coming back to our one true nature, which is the allness of who we are. We are a slice of the divine. We are shadow. We are light. We are everything in between. And when we embrace it all, we become playful again. We lose judgment. We lose fear. We we truly, you know, we don't lose fear for things like, you know, stepping over a cliff. <laughs> we keep that. Yay. <laughs> But you get what I'm saying. We lose the psychological fear of I'm not enough or how will others see me, things like that, because we're just being all that we are. I love you so much, and I will see you on the next video. Blessings.